I will be joined this morning by our very own seasoned public affairs analyst, Ezekiel Nya Etuk. Thank you for joining us virtually from Abuja. Always a pleasure to be with you. Great. Now we have a couple of papers uh, here for review. The Guardian, uh, we have The Punch, we have The Nation, uh, we have Tribune, and Business Day, hopefully we'll be able to take all of them. Anyways, let's begin. I'll start up with The Punch newspaper and then hand over to you. So I take the headlines now. Man, LCCI decry inaccessible 50 billion era COVID-19 loan. Uh, that story is on page 17 of the Punch newspaper. NDDC probe, National Assembly passes verdict on Aquabio and others today. All right, we'll wait and see. That story is on page 18, I believe. It is deceitful blaming Southern uh, Kaduna Kalins on politics. That's according to the Middle Belt uh, Forum and Sukapu on page 2. Fire me, test positive, uh, wife, commissioners, and on the others undergo COVID-19 test. That story is on page seven. Uh, that will be the second time, actually, that he's testing positive. Our prayers are with him and all others who are COVID-19 uh, patients at the moment. The big story, again, we have the COVID-19 update. Just to remind you that Nigeria is at 38,344 uh, confirmed cases. We have thankfully 15,815 persons recovered. Um, the figures there are not clear, but we have 800 and something people who have died as a result of COVID-19 here in Nigeria. You can also see the global figures there on the screens. Now the big story for the Punch newspaper, 774,000 jobs. Kayamo will supervise recruitment and labor ministry replies the National Assembly. That story is on page two. And we have picture stories also there. Uh, the state of our roads, you can see for yourself. Um, I'm not sure whether we, we want to go that way, but well, it can be a subject of conversation when our analyst, it's time for him to analyze. Are your plans 10 billion naira bond for roads, airport, uh, APC, faults, Makindi? That story is on page 17. And gunmen kidnap four Chinese and kill cop in Cross River. Again, the level of insecurity in Nigeria. The story is on page 11. Hodlums abduct businesswoman um, and a man on Ondo Highway. The story is on page 15, I believe. Jagada wins Ondo PDP ticket, battles Akerodolo in October poll. A Nigerian entrepreneur shot self over rape allegation, according to US police. Uh, family six and two. Uh, false accusations. That story is on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, Senate to assemble legal experts on power deals on page 19 of the Punch newspaper. I'm just saying that there's something I left out above. And that's NDE must report to Minister of State, says Ministry, uh, that's according to the Ministry spokesman. That's on the 774,000 uh, jobs uh, that Kayamo must supervise. 52 billion Naira Public Works Fund for NDE, not Ministry, the Senate insists, and the battle continues. Over to you, uh, Mr. Nya Etok. What's your yeah. thoughts? Um, very first is um, just trying to wonder where to start from. But let me look at the um, KMO and the 774,000 jobs. Yeah. And, um, the very first question I asked myself was exactly what is the government trying to achieve by this um, kind gesture? And it bothers me, I keep saying the same thing, almost sounding like a broken record. Mm. What, what, what is our concept of governance? Let me give you a little story. I contested the governorship of Akwai State in 2019, and over there, one of the key things I was bringing up was what we call social governance, which is a bottom-to-top governance approach, you know, with the primary uh, purpose of bringing the citizens out of poverty. And for you to do that, we laid so much emphasis on M -M -M SMEs, you know? So when I didn't get the ticket, obviously, I said, what you cannot do on a macro scale, you can do on a micro scale. So the next week, I just put it on my page of, uh, page of my, 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 one of my social media handles. 
What can you do with 10,000 Naira to 100,000? What can you do? If I gave you my money and I gave you interest free, what can you do? And within 24 hours, I had over 800 applications. Wow. I reduced it to 50,000 Naira, between 10 and 50,000 Naira. Now, I thought, you know, social media, you just put something out, everybody comes out. I said, okay, if you are ready, if you are serious, come to my office. I'm not going to give you transport. This is not politics. Election is over. This is my personal money. So I'm not coming, I'm not begging you, I'm not doing anything. Almost 500 people showed up. Wow. I sat them down and I drilled them one after the other for seven days, morning till night. And I cried instead of tears, I've not cried in a long time. Over 70% were graduates, and all of them needed between 30 and 50,000 naira. And when they started pitching the ideas of what they wanted to do with the money, I could, it was just unbelievable. This was just as 2019. Aid, an, sorry? This was just 2019. It's not like this yeah, is 10 this years is ago. Just, just, yes, exactly. And what some needed 20,000, I wish I could go into details, but I can't. Mm. At the end of the day, I could only accommodate about 100,000, about 100 of them. As at today, I'm telling you categorically and emphatically that so many of them have repaid the money 100%. Now, these are people who are getting into productive venture. They are coming to all sorts of things. And then the federal government wants to bring almost 100,000 Naira and give to each person to achieve what after three months? Could that program have been structured a little differently? Is that program intended to bring about a few people that can be, you know, the, the bottom source of employment generation? Or are we just doing another, throwing money into, you bring people up, you give the means of livelihood, in quote, for a couple of days, public works, and after that, well, well, it's only to run for three months. Mm. And that whole humongous amount of money gets into, into, into voicemail. It just, just vanishes into thin air. Are we thinking as a nation? Do we not understand what cerebral governance is all about? I am bothered. That is the intention. The intention. That's number one. Number two, why the fight? It is simple. Bring it. I give to my cronies as a reward. That's bottom line. That's what the struggle. Nobody's struggling over the concept that this concept could be fine-tuned, could be taken a little differently. I'm telling you what I did practically some months back. They are still repaying me that money because I gave it to them interest-free, you know? But you've got to tell me what you want to do. You've got to tell me you have the relevant experience. Imagine such amount of money being applied within this framework of principle. Nigeria will have thousands of young people who are starting to do business. One of the women wanted to do what she called African salad. Mm. She said, you know, I, I want to do African salad and all I need is 30,000 Naira. That lady has repaid me completely and she is building. We have called her back to come and take more. And she, she's, she's building a business of supplying people, who, you know, this Uba and all those kind of, you know, specialized things that people are like, can I have it? You can't get your wife to do it because, I mean, strangers, she's doing a man scale. This is the sort of thinking that you start to breed entrepreneurs. Right. This is the sort of thinking that, that advances the system. And not you bring all these people. And then, look, on the other hand, if you must give the money out, let it be to the people that need the money. I said this on this program before, and I repeat it. Go to a body that is already established. It is the National Association of... Um, the village uh, presidents. Mm, sure. Those presidents are not poli political. They are, they are non-partisan. They are apolitical. So they know that, like in my village, when I wanted to do palliatives over this um, the, the COVID period, I just sent it to them, and those things got to the people that needed them because these are people who understand the poorest of the poor in the villages, and they can't even monkey around with that money because they will not, leave that, they will not stay in that village. Mm. So anyway... 
That said, you can't spend all the time on that. I pray that the federal government will have a rethink on this project and they will really, really make it count and start to have a different mindset in governance and all this, you know, patronage and all those things. They are, they are, they are lead, they, they've led us somewhere, but where it has led us is that we have become the poverty capital of the world. Yeah. Now, when you come into um, the another story that I find um, amusing is yeah. that of the NDDC. And um, you say the National As uh, Assembly you know, um, gives verdict on Apabio today. Mm. Let me say this Apabio with every sense of, yes. Let me say this with every sense of responsibility. And as somebody who, who, who can say it authoritatively, because I have been close to the leadership of NDDC over the past probably two, three, four dispensations at the highest level. I have sat in the office of the MDs of NDDC, I mean, I've had unfettered access. Don't ask me if I'm a contractor. No, I'm not. I'm just a friend because I care and bother about the Niger Delta. <laughs> the pressure that these people are under is unimaginable. From where? Two places. The presidency, National Assembly. The threat, the way they breathe down the throat of these people. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. That probe is not going to happen. It's not going to happen, wow. except, and I'll tell you why it's not going to happen. If that probe goes on, somewhere along the line, if the president sees the list, all this one that you know, this, the, the speaker is saying, bring the list, bring the list, He's not, he doesn't mean it. Because he knows. Don't tell me, let me see the name of the National Assembly member that is named. Well, all I need to do Amaka, if you were the MD of NDDC, mm -hmm. it's for me to call my friend Udofia. Udofia, go and see Amaka. Udofia comes to you. Amaka, Udofia is from me. Please, um, that job, give it to him. Mm -hmm. So the name that is going to be on that job is Udofia's job. It's not my job. Every fool knows that it's my job. So when he said, bring the list, let me see my name on it. No, no, unless some greedy senators that cannot even afford to Troll, National Assembly members that cannot afford, afford to trust anybody. So they will say, put in my name. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that 99% of the names are through their cronies. There's a guy in NDDC that they used to call him Villa. This guy is, he, he is from Villa. And he carries files himself. That's the level of fear and trepidation. Because these people are so afraid that they will be removed if you don't, don't do their bidding. I want, I want the, the forensic audit to list the names. We'll go back, look at when payments were done, and call these people, and they will sing as to who they were representing. By the time you see one man's name appearing on over 500 files, mm. you don't need rocket science for you to know that he is an agent of an institution. Mm. And that guy will be brought to testify, and he will start to sing. And because when the music starts, the names that will drop will make it, look, if, if they will just have to shut down the presidency and shut down the National Assembly. Mm. And I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility. Let me end on this note. And I, I feel very sad and very unhappy right. because virtually, virtually all the major character people involved are my personal friends. When I say personal, I mean one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mm -hmm. The reason is when an interim government or a committee was to be set up in, in NDDC, I was one of those that even against the express provision of the constitution, I said, I love the intentment. Please let it be. What was the intentment? If you send people that are being confirmed by the Senate to go and um, you know, supervise the audit, likelihood is that there will be compromises here and there. Yeah. So the wisdom was take a neutral body there, six months, because they are neutral and only answerable to Mr. President, likelihood is that they couldn't give face, they couldn't care what anybody does, and the audit will be done. But almost a year after that's not done. Instead, uh, we are hearing other stories, and I'm like, is that what I supported? No. no. If Mr. President means well, and I say this, if Mr. President is a man of honor, 
and of integrity. Let him call the auditors and address him. This is where over 90% of the resources of Nigeria comes from. And Mr. President, if he can be the Minister of Petroleum, he can afford to call those people and say, I want this audit report in six months. Mm. You have any problem? I am di relate directly with me. I want this audited report. When that report gets to the table of Mr. President, many heads will grow. I do not know, with all due respect, if Mr. President is willing to exercise that level of political will. And if he's not, then let us just uh, let it roll. A day will come when somebody will do it. And on a final note, final note, yeah. what is our recruitment process? It means that sometimes certain things are dead on arrival. Oh, architect, you know, you're from the Niger Delta, you are being my guy, and you're going forward, please send me somebody. For NDDC? No. We should have the sort of, you know, the, the, if Coca-Cola is to have a new MD, the recruitment pro profiling process will be so rigorous, and the names will, that will come up will be men of capacity that have no interest in politics and they're just professionals. And we start to run, whether it's the Northeast Development Commission, whether it's the NDDC, whether it is the NPA, we need to stop this patronage, putting people there, they're my friend. I know them, I don't know them. You don't need to know any of them. What you need is a clear leadership profiling process that throws up the best, best on excellence. The day we start that, including NNPC, Nigeria will start a new path. And let me drop finally that one day somebody finally. will do it. This is your last finally for the, the Punch newspaper so we can move on to another yeah. paper. That's okay. it. All right. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the Nation uh, newspaper now. Uh, thank you for all of those insights you have brought. Insiders insight, if you like. The Nation newspaper says COVID-19 fire me goes into isolation. Wife and aides uh, also go for tests. That's on page five, I believe. Jagada wins Undo PDP ticket. A deputy governor uh, loses, loses out. That story is on page five. Oyo to issue 10 billion naira bond for road projects. Mago to open defense before panel today. Uh, both stories are on page six of the Nation newspaper. Uh, tenants now to pay uh, six percent stamp duty uh, says FIRS. And we have that story on the front page, but this continues on page four. We have a picture story um, of uh, paraded criminals, uh, suspects, let's say. 217 kidnapped suspects and bandits held by police. That story is on page two. You can see display of ammunition and I think some hard currency there, right? Some currency moved from. Uh, unfortunately, I can't read, but well, I think it's taken, recovered, yeah, recovered from the suspects yesterday. I wonder why the suspects, they always look, you know, very, very tattered, and the kind of things they do is, I don't understand it, it doesn't add up. Reps demand evidence of $11 billion uh, withdrawal from ECA. Controversial past sector funding returns to the front burner. Five humanitarian workers executed oh, by Boko Haram in Borno. That story is on page two, and that will be it uh, from the Nation newspaper. Let me now hand over to you again. Yeah, um, lots of um, stories that, that um, are taught, hmm. like one of my friends would say. Number one, let's look at the withdrawal from the excess crude account for the power sector. The day that we stop, um, we stop um, this act of insincerity, that day God will help us as a nation. Look at the power sector. You've gone spiritual again. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I think it's like uh, they say that religion is the opium of the society and that hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul. So it's difficult not to resort to that in a country like Nigeria. If not for religion, I think suicide rates would just be just unbelievable when you see what happens. There. Look at power. Power is not rocket science. 
power is universal. Every country uses power. What is the problem with power in Nigeria? And you just hear humongous amount of money withdrawn. What is so difficult? What is that thing that is absolutely impossible to address concerning power, concerning petrol, petroleum, refineries, oil, refining? You know, what, what is so... I sit down and really ask myself, what is that real problem that honest and sincere Nigerians cannot address? I can't find. Hmm. What's happening in Ghana? Do they have power? South Africa is talking about 40 um, um, what megawatts of power. South Africa. Nigeria is talking about between five and the day they will say it gets up to seven. It's like a pat on the back. And I ask, you don't reinvent the wheel. How is it done outside? You see, there's one simple thing about power. Power is either treated as business or is treated as social infrastructure. If it is treated as business, you give cost reflective tariff. You bring the specialists in the field that have done it in other countries, they do it. If it's treated as social infrastructure, just like in social housing, the, the cost of generation is a constant, is a given. Mm. But then the, the government, just like in petroleum, they come in to subsidize. So you have to ask yourself, which model do I want? Do I, do I want to give a mid-range? That mid-range, what is the subsidy factor? That subsidy factor, how should it go to the target beneficiaries? Those target beneficiaries, how can I recruit them? How do I profile them? These are things that I, as an architect, I can tell you how it can be done. And the reason I can tell you is that it's the reason I've never accepted any appointment in my life. Never, ever, never, ever. Right from school, the company I registered in school about 40, almost 40 years ago, right? Then probably just business name or something. is the same company I'm working with today. You go to NDDC, as close as I've been to them, I don't do contracts. I'm just, I'm just a housing person. Anything outside housing, I don't do it. It means that business works on certain fundamentals, certain principles, the principles of honesty, of focus, of professionalism, of excellence, of integrity, of do rightness. These are the principles that once you apply, it works. It's universal. When God says that righteousness exalts a nation, it means do rightness. So it's why can't we just... It, it's, the next thing you want to hear is pro panel. Mm. What comes out of the pro panel? Mm -hmm. It's bros, come and talk to me. Sad. Why? Because every National Assembly member needs enough to execute the enough the next election or enough to exit where there's a zoning principle in their area and he knows he will not come back. Bottom line, the National Assembly to a great extent is a recruitment area, either for the next election or for an exit. So they must come in and devise means. Nigerians are very ingenious. Nigerians are the most cerebral people, the most intelligent set of people. You see, people talk about 419. How many of us understand that you can't scam a man except you are smart and sharp? We need a leadership that comes to harness our goodness in the positive direction. So whether it is a, a account for, for excess crude um, uh, accounts, withdrawals, I mean, where is that going to lead us to? Hmm. I wouldn't we had it. I've talked personally one-on-one -on -one with my brother Elumelu, who was the chairman on the past, probe sector and everything, and I think you need to call him and talk to him. At the end of the day, if you don't have a heart, you can carry a gun and shoot yourself and, and exit this country. 
Because oh. we really let's don't care let's about Let's not get to that country. point. Let's not get to that point, hopefully. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's how that, that's how we're going to leave it. Uh, we, we don't have much time uh, by our side this morning. We would like to continue this conversation and have you, you know, break all of this down and put them into perspective and context, but uh, time will not allow. We'll have you back again on Thursday, hopefully next week, and continue the conversation. Thank you so very much, Ezekiel Nya, Etok, Public Affairs Analyst for your country. And do keep safe out there. I appreciate the privilege. All right. And that's how we wrap it up on the program of the press. We continue this Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa. The time is 8.30 a.m. I am Amaka Okoye asking you also and reminding you to keep safe out there. <laughs>